Happy Independence Day, Redeemer. I know lots of people in the world love to say very bad things about our country and think maybe because of so many of the bad things that have happened, we shouldn't even have a birthday party. But I'm not on that boat. I'm thankful for the United States of America. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride from every mountainside, let freedom ring. I'm thankful to be here, and I'm thankful to be in a country that allows us to do what we're doing here right now. It ain't happening everywhere. And I'm also thankful that even when the government of the United States of America is at odds with the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts, still, we have liberty to be here. And yet, I don't rejoice simply in that. But I rejoice about names. The United States of America is the name of this country. And I believe that the very name of our country gives us insight in today's gospel, where Jesus calls us not to rejoice that spirits are subject to us, but that our names are written in heaven. Thankful to God for this blessing and thankful to God for this gift. It is that name, not United States, but the name that says we are in a state of being united with Christ, and with each other. You see, the 72 in today's gospel were sent out by Jesus two by two. And although we many times feel alone, Jesus never sends us that way. Just like the cover of your bulletin today shows two folks walking together, there is always one walking with us. You may not always see your partner, you may not even know a lot about your partner, but Jesus never sends you out alone. We are together, a state of being united. And as we are, we're, we are together in Christ and then together with each other, out to do good things in the world. We don't need money bags, sandals, knapsacks, and the like. God provides us everything we need. His word of truth, his sacraments of forgiveness, so that we can go wherever he sends us. And we might go from place to place, finding ourselves in different homes and different places. But we're told clearly, just eat whatever it is they put before you, even if you can't spell it or smell it. And proclaim there Peace be to this house. If there is a son of peace there, you'll know you have more than one partner. You'll have others who are part of a grand throng who all receive, teach, celebrate, and share Christ Jesus. But you don't go from place to place, and you don't go from state to state in order to find a place that agrees with your ideologies. Instead, you go where you've been planted, you stick it out, and you proclaim the kingdom of God, healing in Jesus' name. And as you do, people will know the kingdom of God is drawn near. Not everybody's going to like it. Not everybody's going to accept it. But that does not thwart us from Christ's mission. We recognize that not even the dust from the streets need be on our feet anymore. We rid ourselves with them. And as we do, we know that the judgment will be even more harsh on places that insist on individualism as opposed to navigating and nurturing community. It has been said that the United States of America is a place that champions individual liberties. But there's a difference between championing individual liberties and championing individualism. Individualism has us focused on ourselves, our own needs and our own desires, over and above everybody else. That's not what makes this country what it is. 
Instead, as God calls us, we see that our country may have been founded and called these United States, but today, after the Civil War, we are the United States. Not because we all get along, not because everybody has rights, not because everything is perfect. Sometimes it's Plessy and Ferguson, other times it is Jackson and Dobbs, sometimes it is Roe and Wade. And our differences become extremely pronounced. But all along the way, God does not call us to think that everybody will always receive what the church brings. But we extend what Jesus has given us anyway. And we, as the church, become the convicting reality of koinonia and community for the world. For we in our sin, deserve death. But we, by God's grace, have been given life. And that life brings us into the life of Jesus and unites us with each other so that we are in a state of being united at every moment, walking side by side with another companion, sometimes visible and sometimes not, but all the while proclaiming that the kingdom has indeed drawn near. It is this reality that shows us the church bears our burdens together. Bear one another's burdens in the Lord, St. Paul reminds us. And in doing so, we correct each other skillfully, carefully, and lovingly, directing people to where true life and forgiveness is found. In the one who went to a cross by himself, who suffered on a cross by himself, who died by himself, who was buried by himself, and who rose by himself so that none of us would have to be by ourselves anymore. Brought into the life of Jesus, we are brought into his defeat of death and brought into his life of peace. And as such, every single day of our lives gives us a chance to rejoice in his promises. Not simply that spirits are subject to us in Jesus' name, but thankful that our names are written where Jesus is. Our names are on the palms of his ascended hands, gone up into glory. Our names, more permanent than the name written on the temple that had been destroyed twice. The name of Jesus, that every knee bows and every tongue confesses, is Lord and Savior of all. It is this reality, then, that gives us courage and confidence during this Independence Day weekend not to find the nearest tubed meat and throw it over a raw fire outside, pretending that small packets of dynamite with explosive colors will bring us joy. Instead, my friends, this Independence Day weekend is not about a pox Americana as much as it is a piece of Christ a recognition that we, as a convicting reality, will show the world that we may vary in our opinions, vary in our cultures, vary in our backgrounds, vary in our languages, vary even in our political ideologies. But what is important is the one who is important, who brings us into unity together and allows more than 72 to rejoice and be glad that their names are written in heaven. Sisters and brothers in Christ, on this Independence Day weekend, God gives us a chance to be the convicting reality of community for the world. When the United States acts like the divided states, we will show the rest of the citizens of this country that we can be different but we can still get along. We can listen 
compassionately and caringly, and we can admonish skillfully and lovingly. And we can do so because we've been sent by Jesus, and we are in a state of being united with him. And united with martyrs of Nigeria, with sufferers in Myanmar and Colombia, with a growing church in Eritrea, in Ethiopia, united even with those who feel that hope is lost. We are united with all who receive, teach, celebrate, and share Christ Jesus. For we are church, a convicting reality of what it means to be one, to bear each other's burdens, and to give up individualism and embrace true community. That, my friends, is what makes not only the church's witness profound, that, my friends, is what the United States of America needs today. In the trenches, on the ground, in the streets, in our homes, reminding the world that we don't do this by ourselves. We do it together. We live together. We serve together. We bring healing together. We proclaim life together. So, when the fireworks start, and the meat is consumed, and the potato chips go from the lips to the hips, when the fruit salads are shared, and the lazy days of watermelon seeds find their way in the ground, remember instead that these United States became the United States and that there are many states of mind where we may find ourselves. But we are in a state of being united. United in Christ. United with each other. United in the mission of eternity. As we look to the day when Jesus returns and shows all creation how all is united in him. Thanks be to God for this state of being united and the convicting reality of community which prompts us to the joy that our names are written in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.